Okay, for introduction. I hope I don't show my my as a person who are a young guy fascinated with guys and bumblebees and show more uh, more theoretical approach. So uh, today I would like to present uh, preliminary results of my research project, and my presentation will take three parts. In the first part, I show as what, what is the research is about, what we know from historical source, source what we know from existing research, and second part I would like to present some. In second and third part, I would like to present some uh, features, some objects from. Um, a remote sensing application from, applica from application of remote sensing data into the landscape of conflict. So, the research title is The Past Landscape of the Army of Pomerania, a Remote Sensing Perspective. And the Army of Pomerania is one of the part of the Polish army who prepared defense uh, before the before Second World War. And they uh, and the, this preparation was in northern Poland, in Pomerania, and this, this territory depends on my research area. And the research question is how this landscape was created, functioned, and this particle, how it survives. survived. I am in, apply a landscape archaeology background to, the, to, uh, to understand how the people prepared the, the finish, defense, how the uh, how the soldier was uh, fighting into this into this fortification and how it survived to this day for making some plan for uh, protecting this kind of heritage. And I used uh, various remote sensing data from LS to, to aerial photography, satellite imagery, geophysics, and some uh, field survey. And this is my research area. It's border on the west and on the east is a border of Polish between Polish and Germany in 1959. And this border was making uh, during preparation by headquarters of Polish army. Uh, okay, we have uh, quite a bit information from historical sources. And this is uh, information from headquarters of Polish army. But we have one problem because uh, before the defeat in 1939, almost all documents were destroyed for protecting uh, for protecting between in German. And uh, this is uh, one kind of this uh, maps who survived. This is uh, from uh, Sikorsky Institute and Museum in London. And we have just a general idea how the defense was prepared. And in some small area was survived kind of more precise plan, but mostly we have just just a line of the map in big scale. And uh, before I go to the interpretation of remote sensing data, I do some historical query and I manage what we know from historical research. And the third part, third, the most important source was a handbook from interwar period. Uh, this is a Polish handbook. And thanks to that, we know exactly how the field fortification is used. This is one page of this handbook uh, with cross section of trenches. And this is uh, another page with, where we know general ideas how locate the trenches and some information about the plan of the trenches. So, but we have some existing research. It's a very surprise to me because in 2003, some archaeologists from Torun prepared a PhD thesis about field fortification system. The, this PhD was never published. I met the guy one week ago, so I'm still working on this data. But they do some small excavation uh, of this field fortification. We have some there. This field fortification was based on some concentrate shelters, and what right we have here, and these shelters were mm, at some field fortification, and we have some cross section of of trenches. And these archaeologists do some field survey to detect trenches. This is before uh, digital 
the tyrant, this is before a light in Poland, so they take a GPS and go to the forest and take the measurements. And try to do some metal detector survey on field uh, when uh, the trenches are not survived with a landscape probe. So, now I show a few examples and uh, methodology of preparing uh, data and I hope to get some comments, maybe some ideas what I can do better. And first is uh, a laser scanning data. I use uh, government data who is uh, gathering to program IT system of country protection. This is not for archaeological purpose, but the quality is quite good for, for application into the archaeology. And to the methodology, I start from the point cloud and processing various types of visualization to get the most what I can do. <coughs> And now I would like to present some examples of the object. <coughs> and here is an example of fortification on the line which we really know. This is a river, and we know there is uh, some fortification, but we know, don't know in the micro scale what's going on in this place. And the arrow shows uh, remains of the trenches. And they are very similar to the trenches from Handbook. We have some uh, memories of the soldier who find them there, find there. And this is another example. Uh, but this is a place from from the central part of research area, and from historical research and historical source, we don't know about any line of defense. And this is uh, two options uh, here. Um, this is. It can be a German preparation in 1944, uh, the defense, but this is not um, that big like the Germans do, and probably this is a, another line of defense prepared in 1949, but didn't mention in any, any kind of historical sources. And his, his, this is a, uh, another example. And about this line, we know really, really much because this is a uh, place research. These are colleagues who I mentioned before. This is a, a line of defense on the sub area of Burgos city. And here we have some line of fortification. But this, this is a very uh, good example of we have, not everything was done because here we have unfinished shelter. And this is that visible on the data because these walls are uh, earth walls and in the center we have just a we have just a foundation of these shelters. And here we have probably uh, some remains of wooden earth shelter because when they prepare the fortification they do not just uh, cement, they do some wooden and earth shelters. And here is a second type of object. This is a um, uh, objects of different types, different shapes, uh, but they are not clearly a field fortification. This is a lot of different type of shapes. This is a probably position for artillery. You can say it about this as a field fortification. But we have a lot of different different objects. I'm still working on that. I generally add everything what is not a trenches or, or any kind of fortification to that class of object. And this, with this, I have a, quite a big problem with chronology because this is a very universal or generally Second World War. And I don't can uh, connect straightly to Polish preparation to, to defense. <coughs> and this is the last uh, type of objects, uh, the remains of explosion craters. They are not very often spotted, but here is uh, one of the biggest place place of that would give a lot of information about conflict landscape, but not that much information about chronology. I do some uh, area prospection in last year. I make in the next two years some prospection. 
and the results are not very good because the geology of Orion was quite uh, quite hard to interpretation and quite high, hard to application of aerial photography, aerial prospection. And what we have right there, we have some field uh, near the Bitgosh, and we have one field with uh, 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 with crop marks. If you look closer, uh, you get some objects which can be uh, connected with a complete landscape. Here, this is maybe a uh, some fragment of trenches, maybe some explosion craters. This is another example from the east part of my research area. Here we have a lot of coral marks, right there, right there. And something can be a uh, remains of trade trenches right there. This is another example from the center part. This is a very Interesting because uh, a few hundred meters there we have a uh, highly prepared line of fortification, but here we have some objects uh, on the behind of this behind this line, and we have probably some remains of trenches there, and maybe maybe there. And another example of remains of trenches. Uh, on this field, if you look closer, we see some, some crop marks which can be connected with the trenches. And this is a um, position on um, based on the river and the lakes right there. And this is a known Polish defense position. And work still is in progress. And this moment, I find 260 objects in the most area connected with a with known line of defense, but in some area I have uh, remains of field fortification, which can be another unknown line of Polish defense, but uh, or can be connected with other uh, fight during the Second World War. One week ago, I had my first field uh, field survey, so I still to uh, prepare a documentation from that about the concentrate shelters. We have just uh, uh, 40 of that on this whole area. I do some photo documentation, and I still working on that. Here, this is not good really visible, but shadows sh shadows uh, show where the remains changes. Okay, and then let's go to the summary. Uh, like I mentioned, the research will be uh, continued, and in the next year, uh, I do some geophysics on the some site. I do a new aerial photo every day, every every year. Uh, yeah. And the research allows to capture relics of war activities in a completely new way. Uh, before that, we just know about the lines on the maps on the big scale and don't, not, don't really know about the micro scale of the conflict. We don't know where precisely the, they will be situated. And we are uh, much closer to the situation where the soldier was. Uh, for example, we have uh, some memories where the soldiers say what they see from the trenches and now we can just looking for these trenches and try understand what, how do you say, what they are see and what is important for the soldier in the trenches. And a large number of complementary sources allow us to understand what was guided during the preparation of the defense. And we have uh, manuals, we have uh, a map, historical maps, and we can compare the idea what's what they are thinking about the preparation and what they do in fact in, in the field. And data complements but leads the interpretation problems, uh, mostly with aerial photography. Uh, the objects are really small and always, uh, and and in the most case we are not cannot be sure what we have on the on the photo. And Research will allow these objects to be protected in Poland. 
there are no protection rules for this type of objects, and this is a very important part of my work because um, in Poland we have a system where every single uh, voivode ship have uh, their own idea how to protect of this site. Is somewhere this is a new kind of site, like a military site. Is somewhere they are play, they are treating, they are uh, archaeological site, and I hope I can do some try to manage this problem and um, prepare the idea how we can defend this, this type of site. Thank you for your attention.